So this is our 235 Husqvarna chainsaw. <laughs> I've had it for about 10 years and it still runs pretty strong. Um, most of the chainsaws I've had, the pistons go out after about a year, but I've been buying Poulon Pros, which really are nothing in the Pro Series. But Husqvarna makes a great chainsaw. The uh, 235 is a smaller chainsaw, but I tell you, this thing is tough. It cuts through a lot of different things. The problem that we ran into with this chainsaw is that the carburetor uh, stopped losing pressure. And of course, for a chainsaw to repair it, they wanted about, well, a little over a hundred bucks to repair the chainsaw. And the chainsaw itself is only about 165, 170 bucks to begin with. So I didn't want to go the route of paying somebody to repair it. But I also didn't want to throw out a perfectly good chainsaw because uh, it had a bad carburetor. So I went onto Amazon and I'll post the link below. I got a kit which included a carburetor, it included a fuel filter, spark plug, it even has a carburetor adjustment which I'm going to do a different video on the adjustment because I'm still uh, figuring that out and I didn't want to include it into the replacement video. But that entire kit was $29. So I fixed this uh, <coughs> This chainsaw for 29 bucks. Uh, even though I haven't adjusted the carburetor yet, it will still start up and run. So I'm going to walk you through this step by step. I will say that be, before you get into this, there there have been a lot of videos where people are taking the whole thing apart. I took the whole thing apart. Then it's just more parts that you have to put back together. So uh, in order to change your carburetor, you're just going to remove the handle, which is about three screws. You have a screw here, which uh, is attached to a spring. You have a screw underneath, which is also attached to a spring, and then you have a screw here attached to a spring. And that will release the handle, and then you'll have a um, cable coming out that connects to your throttle. Um, and that I just removed with a pair of needle nose pliers. That is a little bit of a struggle. You could take the handle apart, but again, that's more you have to put that back together again. And I didn't have a problem getting that out, putting it back on. And then once you remove all of that, and you remove this cover here, which is another uh, probably two or three screws. There's basically a piece of plastic right in here with one screw on it on one end, and you pull that off. And at that point, you can get completely into the carburetor. So I'm going to show you the video that I've put together and uh, kind of walk you through the steps. I'll re-mention some of those areas where I took too many things off when I didn't need to. And um, hopefully, if you have a, a, a chainsaw, um, and it turns out that you have a bad carburetor, this video will help you fix it. Whenever possible, it's good to have a nice clean space to work on. I like to use these metal trays that I found out in the barn. The first thing you're going to have to do is remove the very top piece that's just held on by two screws for your cover. I think it's actually maybe three screws. And then <clears throat> go ahead and remove your air filter that is held on by one screw and then once you remove that screw, you'll be able to lift out um, kind of the metal barrier that holds the air filter in place and the air filter itself. The next thing you have to do is remove the handle of the chainsaw. This is held on by about three screws. As I mentioned before, uh, those screws screw into uh, some springs and this what helps the handle kind of move on it. Once you get your handle loose, there'll be a throttle cable that goes to the switch on the handle. That could be a little tricky to get out, but I got them out by using needle nose pliers. You could also take apart the whole handle just to get that little piece out, but um, that, again, that's more parts you have to put back together again, and you can carefully slip that uh, through the switch with uh, some needle nose pliers. It's not that big of a deal. So with your handle off, I thought that I had to remove uh, some screws on the crankcase. You really don't have to. There's just one screw on the back of this uh, plastic piece. And you'll see here in a minute that once you remove that screw, that plastic piece will, uh, will break free. And from there, you can actually access, uh, you can access all the last three bolts on the uh, 
air filter box and remove the air filter box and that gives you all the access you need to the carburetor. Now I'm using a Southwire screwdriver. I talk about this screwdriver a lot in my uh, small engine repair videos. It has an attachment that will work on just about anything when you're doing these small engine repairs. I absolutely love this screwdriver. I put a link to it below. Now this is where I got a little confused again. I um, was thinking that that box was somehow screwed on underneath the uh, crankcase cover. So to my surprise when I removed it, there was no such screw. What I discovered was that the bottom of the uh, air box just kind of pops out and then you'll have to remove your um, on off switch, which is fairly simple to do. Just has one screw, the rest of it will kind of pop out. And then you can slowly just kind of pry the old carburetor off of its mount there. I like to uh, try and save the gasket if I can. If the gasket doesn't rip, you can uh, reuse it. The new carburetor does come with new gaskets, but it's, they're paper gaskets. The original gasket on this carburetor was rubber, for the rubber. You'll remove the throttle cable, and then you'll have to kind of remove the choke. You might want to just take the carburetor off before playing with the choke. The gas lines, um, pull out from the sides of the carburetor. You're going to want to pay attention to which gas line is on which side of the carburetor. If you're looking at the carburetor, I believe the left side goes up into the pump button and the right side goes down into the gas tank. Now, this carburetor kit comes with a fuel filter. So at this point in time what I did was I went ahead and replaced the fuel filter. The old fuel filter on our chainsaw had been removed by the repair shop so I didn't have to pull the old one off but you would normally pull it off and then you would set the new one on. I like to use a rag when I handle these uh, fuel filters because they pick up dirt very very easily and then you just kind of set it back in and the the fuel filter has a weight on it to help it sink to the bottom of that gas tank. Now to install your new carburetor, you're going to have to put back on your, your choke. I like to do this first because it's the hardest part to put on. Our new carburetor also came with a new push button, uh, so I went ahead and replaced that as well. Those tend to get dried out and uh, don't hold the air as well. And now you just put on back on your gas lines. Now, I struggled with this because I didn't remember where the gas lines had come off from, but once I figured it out, uh, the right side connects down in directly into the tank and the left side connects up to your uh, your little push button, primer button. Now the primer button uh, gas line was not fitting on there correctly for me. The kit, and I'm providing a link for that below, also comes with new gas lines so I just uh, used part of that new gas line and put it into place and then um, I'll, I'll cut it to the proper length that I need it. You could replace all your gas lines but that's a lot of work if you don't need to 
and I didn't need to, I just needed to replace that one gas line to make this work. Now you just slide the carburetor back on over the two uh, bolts sticking out. This was another problem I ran into. It, it, before you slide that carburetor on, it would be a good idea to go ahead and install your throttle cable because you've, you're not gonna be able to maneuver that very well once the carburetor is slid back in place. But putting back on that little cable is fairly simple. Make sure that it doesn't fall off as you kind of slide the carburetor back into place. And then replace your air filter box you can figure out the direction it goes. Yeah, see, I had a little trouble there too. And I went ahead and put the screw for the air filter box back in place first to kind of hold it there. And then I uh, put the nuts back on the bolts for the uh, carburetor after I was done in reinstalling my other components like my switch and of course my choke. Switch just screws back into place. I like to test everything and make sure that it's connecting where it's supposed to. Then I replaced the bolts on the air back box and reinstalled my air filter. Now this kit actually comes with a new air filter. So I here I started to put in the old air filter and then I figured out that I had a brand new air filter and so I put in the new air filter. There's the new air filter. Now, if you're just replacing the air filter and you're not doing the carburetor, you can actually install this air filter without taking off all those pieces on the back. Finally, I'm reinstalling that back little plastic piece that turned out to be the only piece that was necessary to take off besides the handle and then I reconnected my throttle cable back into the switch again using needle nose pliers and I reattached my uh, chainsaw handle to the, the screws and the, the springs I believe there's three all together that hold it into place because I had taken off the crankcase cover, I went ahead and put that back on. Finally, this kit also came with a spark plug. So I went ahead and changed my spark plug, put a new one in there. I love new spark plugs. Everything runs better with a new spark plug. the spark plug in place, you can go ahead and put your cover back on. I would suggest to make sure that you actually put the spark plug plug wire over the spark plug before you try and install the cover. It's just not going to fit quite right. There we go, I figured it out. And then just screw that back on. So it is that easy to replace the carburetor in your Husqvarna chainsaw. I'm assuming a lot of these chainsaws are fairly similar in how you access the carburetor and replace it. When I'm done with a project like this, I like to just go over um, my on-off switch, 
my clutch, uh, press the trigger a few times, and really make sure that everything is working correctly before I put the project up. But uh, for the most part, this is a fairly easy repair. It took me no more than about 20 minutes, 20, 30 minutes to do the whole thing. Uh, and that would have cost me over a hundred bucks at the repair shop. Uh, the part, again, the kit that I, I just went through with you, the entire kit was $29 on Amazon, link below. Um, but very easy to do. Enjoy it.